We didn't think there was that much wrong with Sam. As a man, I didn't think there was much wrong with Sam. Sally was convinced he'd got some disorder of some sort. So she mostly pushed it, which resulted in the doctor's testing and us coming out with a diagnosis, which on reflection was the best thing that ever happened. But walking away from the doctors, it was horrendous because you've just got one piece of paper that says your son's got Smith McGinney syndrome. You can expect him to pull his fingernails off, to self injure. He will never sleep, he will never leave home, he's never going to work, he's never going to have a productive life. And lots of stuff like that, which is not the child we had before we walked into the doctor's office and four years down the line is not the child we've got now, uh, nor is it ever the child we expect to have. Because the doctor hadn't really come across smith McGuinness syndrome anyway, I'm not really sure what else he could have done. One of the first things I did in the first week of the diagnosis was go and buy a massive folder, and I started to fill it with bits of information about smith McGuinness syndrome for different professionals. So when we went to see them and they said, oh, I haven't heard of that one, I could say, here's a leaflet, and actually start to give them the knowledge. I would go into an eye appointment with Sam or an ear, nose and throat appointment with Sam and say, he's got smith McGuinness syndrome, he doesn't have any speech, he uses sign, if you can converse with him that way, brilliant. If not, I'll be your translator. We're just trying to preempt all of that and not getting angry about it. Once we got diagnosis, the whole world changes we can go to whatever professional body and say, my son has got smith McGuinness syndrome. I need you to do this for me. I went to counselling, which I didn't think was really for me. And one of the things that really came out of it was that I was over worrying about the future all the time. And I was continuously thinking about that list of characteristics and kind of assigning them to Sam before he'd even done anything. And one of the things that my counsellor said to me was to stop saying the word yet at the end of every sentence. I spent a lot of time thinking, oh, well, Sam doesn't pull his nails out yet and he doesn't stick things into bodily orifices yet. Just thinking that we had to go through a tick box exercise of all these things that he was going to do in his life. And as Nick says, four years down the line, he's still not that person. And I've stopped saying yet. And that's really, really helped me to focus on the here and now. Sam is a delightful boy. He makes us laugh every day, he makes us smile every day. So far he's surpassed everything that we thought he could do. We weren't sure if he would walk, we weren't sure if he would talk, and he's developed far more by the age of six than we ever thought he would. He has a little sister who is two, her name is Esther, and surprisingly to us, they get on brilliantly. They play together, which is wonderful to see. He's never really played with another child before, so to see him actually engaging in play with his little sister is wonderful. We feel like a family now that there's four of us, which is lovely.